Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Tommy Kraft, and I am one of the co-creators, writers, and directors on Electron Blade, as well as the visual effects artist. And today, I want to take you through this shot of one of our characters, Cephas, played by Ed Truco, and show you just a little bit about how it was created. So let's get started. Any shot, of course, starts with the basics. The shot from our shoot, which, of course, was all green screen. You see there's a number of people on the ground. They actually have to be masked out because they're not supposed to be there. That was a mistake when we were shooting. So we had to cut out Ed here and also stabilize the shot because there was some camera movement we didn't want. Now you may be wondering, how do we get from here to here back to here, which is our final shot with the black bars and everything on the top and bottom to make it nice and cinematic? Well... At this point, we have to go to another program, 3ds Max. And this is where our virtual set of the Ambry lives. The Ambry is this location in the Electron Blade universe. And as you can see, it's a very extensive uh, virtual set. All of these books are modeled and textured. They're obviously repeated because there's so many. But all of the shelves, everything is modeled, and basically this is a warehouse where forbidden knowledge has been stored. Come over here, the door, modeled and textured. Everything individually modeled, textured, the whole set lit uh, over the course of many, many hours. So now that we have a virtual set, we need to create our camera movement. And this is before we even get into the visual effect of the transmat portal. Now, I've put the books on their own separate layer here in 3ds Max because there's so many of them that having them on all the time slows down the program. So this way I can just go shut them all off while I'm working. And for now, I'm also going to hide this transmat effect because that's also slowing us down. Now, we have this virtual camera that just kind of moves up and through the scene, and this is where Cephas walks out. Now, this movement, as you can see, is created entirely in post because our source footage, if you recall, was a fairly static shot of just the actor walking by camera. The advantage here is that we don't have to motion track a 3D movement, which saves a lot of time and can bring a lot of flexibility in post, especially on an indie budget. All right, so now that we have our camera movement, the next step is to create our transmat effect. So I have over here in a new scene in 3ds Max a Phoenix FD simulation setup. And I started with this torus shape here. There I just cut the bottom off to kind of give this the gateway effect. And then using a Phoenix liquid emitter with the torus as its source object, with some vortex action and some turbulence and a little bit of gravity and wind, we're able to get this kind of effect. And we are also simulating splashes and mist, which is contributing here, and which is what we're seeing in these particles. So for the final version of the effect, we're actually hiding the liquid and not using it, and we're only going to be using the splashes and mist from it, and we're using the liquid mesh as a base to generate our smoke and fire. So I have a Phoenix fire source here and I've set the Phoenix FD liquid as its source and a six outgoing velocity and some noise on here just to make it interesting. And now this is using the mesh that you see here. This has been generated and simulated in the first uh, Phoenix FD simulator and now that simulator itself is being used as a source for the fire sim. And then it's simply a matter of tweaking our settings in our fire sim, simulating until we get the look that we want. So this is the first test of the transmat effect here using a very basic render and an early version of the sim. I just wanted to get a feel for how it looked and I was actually pretty happy with that overall. So then it was time to drop it into our Ambry scene like you saw earlier. Now that we have that, we're back over here in After Effects and it's time to put everything together as it were stacking the layers starting from the beginning. So this is our base render of the Ambry environment out of 3ds Max. There's no additional post-processing, nothing like that going on here, just the straight render out of Max. Now, the goal of compositing is to take your straight render and post-process it to make it look more realistic and interesting. 
So I'm taking the reflection pass, which is when you're rendering, you can save out passes of your image. And this is literally just the reflective surfaces in the image. And what I'm using it for here is just to double the reflections on my render. So this is with and this is without. With and without. It just helps bring out some more of the details and especially these reflections here. Next is the specular map, which is similar to a reflection map, but a little bit different. Reflection maps will show you everything that is reflective in a scene. A specular map will show you just what has light hitting it at any given time. So I'm using the specular here to kind of just add a little bit of bloom to our highlights. And then finally, I'm bringing the V-Ray Atmosphere Pass in, which is where our portal starts to come in, because that's rendered with our fluid and uh, volume simulation. And I'm using that to kind of darken out the background for the portal effect. And then we have some trees that I rendered out of Max with the same camera movement, because our character is supposed to be coming from a place called the Tangent Forest. And now moving up from that in our list of layers, we also have a self-illumination pass. Now, this is fairly straightforward. It's everything in the scene that emits light rendered on its own pass. This is very useful. I'm using it here to add some extra glows and some extra streaks of light on our lens, which I'm using the star glow filter from Trap Code for. And then next we have this lightning pre-composition, so we're going to come down in here and see what we have. And we're using a couple of effects. We're starting with the basic Saber effect from Video Copilot. It's a classic. And then we have this lightning effect that I made. This is a pre-rendered element. And this is using After Effects lightning with Video Copilot's optical flares dancing along it to just add some interest. Now, moving on from there, I'm using the V-Ray Atmosphere Pass with various blurs and composites and color correction for my lightning to help blur it out and I'm also creating a sort of twirl effect with it or swirl. This is by using the motion tile effect which makes it go whichever direction you want it, top to bottom in this case. Polar coordinates to turn it into a circle. Refine soft mat to feather out the edges a bit more. And then finally a tint to make it black and white so that everything can be black and white and colored later. So as you can see, now we have our pre-comp in here, and it's really starting to do some stuff. So let's keep moving up on our list. I have a couple of atmosphere stock footage clips from Video Copilot. These are subtle, and they've been colored blue. And they just kind of add a little bit of extra material spewing out from the transmat. And now continuing up, we have an adjustment layer. This is our camera lens blur. So... As our character gets closer to the camera, we have to pull focus like we would on a real camera and blur out the background. And now we can drop in our footage of Ed. You can see he's starting to come through the transmat there. This is simply just another luma mat using fractal, no fractal noise to, to kind of fade him in. And then we have another shockwave asset. It's another video copilot asset. Just kind of that pops out of there as he comes out to add a little bit more. And this pre-comp here is to add a little bit more additional detail for when he comes out of the transmat. It's basically taking the footage of Ed, adding some color correction, find edges, which highlights the edges essentially, inverting it, tinting it white, making it blue, adding a luma mat on top of it. And now as he's coming out, we're starting to get some of this effect in here. And then it's just been duplicated with a radial fast blur, which gives it some of that light shaft effect. And then finally, we have an adjustment layer, which is another set of glows and star glows that just kind of blend everything together. And if you're wondering, the way we drop Ed in here with the camera movement is when 3ds Max, if we render to an RPF file, in After Effects, we can import that RPF camera. So I have my footage here in an RPF format. Right-click, keyframe assistant, RPF camera import. Just make sure that you're saving a Z-depth pass when you render to an RPF format. And now we have our camera in After Effects, and we have to go and make sure it'll match our um, oops, our camera settings in 3ds Max. And then I can drop Ed into the scene using this script, 
for 3ds max called ae transform exporter select an object whatever it is copy transforms and then you can paste it onto a 3d layer in after effects which is how i have dropped ed into our scene here and the camera just moved towards that 3d layer like it would if it were in the real world and now if we go up a level we have our shot we've added a little bit of camera shake to it just to add a bit of tension and then another adjustment layer with the curves just to add some basic color correction right there and some chromatic aberration and then finally our 239 anamorphic bars and that is the very basic gist of how we get from start to finish on this shot from electron blade thanks for checking it out and make sure to leave a comment like and subscribe and check back for next week for another visual effects breakdown